You know, throwing the first pitch at a baseball game can be a thrill for any fan, but imagine what it would be like if you were only five years old and you were born with only one hand. Meet Jack Carter. Jack was born with one fully developed hand. Still, he hasn't let that get in the way of him honing his baseball skills. Thanks to a 3D printer, Jack used a special Iron Man helper hand to throw out the first pitch. Jack's parents say he's first learning how to use the new hand for baseball before he moves on to other activities. Meantime, and I love this story, Iron Man actor Robert Downey Jr. had a part in surprising a child with his new bionic 3D printed arm. Downey, complete an Iron Man alter ego character, Tony Stark, oh. delivered the new arm to seven-year-old Alex, who was born with a partially developed right arm. Now, the new arm, which cost less than $350 to make, was given to Alex's family for free. That's incredible. Would you have ever imagined that we would be giving people back their independence with 3D printed limbs. No, and it's absolutely amazing. And we are just getting started and learning what this spectacular technology can do. Now, imagine being a parent of one of these children. You would do anything to bring a smile to their face, just like the ones that we saw on Jack and Alex. Well, this next dad did just that. When it comes to adapting, 13-year-old Reagan Ford could write a book on all the things you can do with only seven fingers. She had a birth defect called Poland syndrome. This is Reagan's dad, Brett. He spent the last 13 years making sure the three fingers his daughter doesn't have will never slow her down. So my dad just buys normal gloves and then traces my hand. With a heart that loves enough to sew for his daughter, Brett decided he could do much better. I didn't really think he would go through with it. With a set of instructions the size of a novel. 262 pages. So. Brett built a machine that would build his daughter a hand. The brain right here takes the file of what you're going to print and it slices it into very, very, very thin millimeter slices. The 3D printer came in a kit and took 30 hours just to put together. Countless more hours to get the pieces just right. Multiple fail. A labor of love where the only payout makes it worth every single tedious minute of toiling. I, I, I just, my heart smiled. This is the moment he's talking about with a hand made from printed plastic. And the look on her face when she caught a ball for the first time in 13 years. That just makes it all worthwhile. Something we might take for granted means the world to this man and just as much to his daughter. He's really cool. Like he's just. He's one of my role models. Just the love of a father to his daughter. That's the only reason. It's, uh, I can't explain it. If you don't have any children, I can't explain it to you. Words can't describe that. All right, get this. Along with limbs, 3D printing is also opening a whole new world when it comes to organs. You heard me right, organs that come from a printer. Don't believe me? Take a look. What's happening to this little piggy named Harry just might save your life. It's actually pig lungs. And it's all because of the work they're doing in this lab. We build lungs here. This is pretty much what it's become for the last six months or so, is a little factory to build lungs. At one health center, they're taking lungs from dead animals and people and basically removing all the cells, leaving nothing but the balloon-like elastic protein. This is the skeleton of a lung when you take the cells away. Then they're taking lung cells from living animals and putting them into the old lung skeletons. So you can see it get bigger. In this chamber, they're creating new lungs. Wouldn't it be neat if we could just take those lungs that nobody wants and recreate them and then give them to someone else? What they're doing here could vastly expand the number of lungs available for people who need transplants, especially children. Someday we are gonna use these techniques to engineer, bioengineer organs for people that need them. And that's how Harry comes into the story. He's the first patient to receive a new lung built in this lab. And this little piggy's doing just fine. Someday, these researchers say they might even use 3D printers to build new organs. Just like science fiction, just like Star Trek. Who says Star Trek has to be a fantasy? Oh, not me. 
But why stop there? What about 3D printed clothing? The fashion industry is also experimenting with 3D technology, even holding a 3D printed fashion show. Full length gown made of soft plastic was printed as a single piece from a digital body scan of the model for a precise fit. Even the accessories like necklaces, bracelets, and handbags are printed. Now, experts say at this level, you and I will probably be able to have the same technology in our homes within the next 10 to 15 years. Wow, well, we've been talking about 3D printers and obviously these things are pretty cool and they're giving people an incredible sense of hope, but is it happening anywhere close to home? Well, joining us today to tell us more is WBOC's Nicole Edenado. Nicole, thanks Hi. for joining us thanks so this much. afternoon. So they are using these 3D printers here on Delmarva. They are, it's, it's amazing really. I visited a couple of businesses right here in Salisbury and in Delaware as well. One of them is a, is a tattoo artist who's using 3D printing to make jewelry. It's, it's unbelievable, it's very crazy, but um, it's just, there's so many different possibilities with this that, you know, it's happening right here in our, in our backyard. Oh my goodness, this isn't something I can pick up down at the big box store. How much does one of these bad boys cost? Well, I mean, they can range. I mean, back in the 80s, they were pretty expensive when they first came out because they were used mainly by scientific research companies and industrial companies. Right. But now today, they can cost anywhere between, you know, uh, as low as $300 upwards of $1,500 or $2,000, really? depending on what you can what you can afford and what you're using it for. So you mentioned the tattoo artists. Are other businesses around Delmarva using them? Yes, actually. One of them that I visited is a, a food safety company, one here in Salisbury, and they're making these uh, prototypes as well as their own line of products, of 3D printed products that help um, in uh, poultry houses and help them sort of, you know, uh, see their, um, do their work right. basically mm -hmm. properly, um, and they're able to sell these these products um, right here from home. So I would assume that people are probably pretty excited about this. People are really excited, and one of the professors who I talked to at Salisbury University, who's teaching a class, is very excited about it. <laughs> it's probably going to be in the future easier and cheaper and faster for you to actually use a 3D printer to make a household item than it would be to, to possibly go to the store. Okay, with everything else that's new, there has to be some drawbacks. There are a couple of drawbacks. One of them is time, uh, but the other one you'll have to uh, tune in tonight <laughs> at 10 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll you'll want to watch that tonight. Yeah. Flat No More, it's on WBOC News at 10 on Fox 21. Mm. How about that technology, stuff like that? absolutely fascinates me. Up next, there's more. Sean? Jimmy and Lisa, that's some pretty awesome stuff and the Wicomico County School District wants to make sure all its students have the opportunity to get hands-on experience with things like 3D printing. Up next, I'll tell you what they're doing to help prepare their students for the future. Plus, we take a little trip down memory lane to one of my favorite oh. things on the show, oh. the group that built a robot to chuck frisbees <laughs> at Jimmy. Love it. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.